Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Malini Gupta. I'm an endocrinologist in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I run my own practice, G2 Endo, and uh, I've been uh, uh, there for a very long time. And I'm so glad you're gonna be joining us as we're talking about thyroid eye disease today. Um, thyroid eye disease is a um, uh, under-recognized uh, issue that stands as its own. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a, a real patient experience with Tepeza, the first and only FDA-approved medication for thyroid eye disease that is used regardless of the duration and activity of disease. So I'd like to introduce my fellow panelists, uh, Nayaz and Jeannie, who live with um, TED and who've taken uh, Tepeza. So hi, ladies. Welcome hi. to Chicago. Hi. Thank you. Um, before we get started into their stories, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about thyroid eye disease and um, uh, Tepeza. Um, thyroid eye disease is a serious autoimmune disease that affects the muscles and the fat behind the eye. So it's uh, progressive and it can lead to a uh, long-term repercussions if it's not treated properly. Uh, patients who have a history of autoimmune disease are more susceptible for having thyroid eye disease. That includes Graves' disease and Hashimoto's disease. So, uh, People who are greater than 40, smokers, um, who, uh, as well as women, have an increased risk for thyroid eye disease. So thyroid eye disease is, is separate disease from Graves and Hashimoto's. It's its own entity. And that means that it needs its own treatment and own specialists. Um, patients may present with a variety of symptoms. And this is really important to note because they may be coming into your clinic with uh, different um, symptoms that are not related to the thyroid. So dry eyes, gritty eyes, red eyes, soreness behind the eyes and pain, uh, watering eyes. Um, they may have difficulty um, seeing when driving and um, in severe cases, vision loss. So this can negatively impact a a person's psychologic health. It can cause uh, a loss of self-confidence and um, increase anxiety and depression amongst patients. And this is something that we really have to emphasize. So Tepeza is the first and only FDA approved treatment for um, thyroid eye disease. And it was approved for broad indication and use in 2020. And um, as you know, the pandemic was going on at that time, and now we're really be able to meet together and talk about this. Uh, Tepeza has been approved for all uh, thyroid eye disease, regardless of duration and activity. So um, how is it given? It's an infusion therapy, and it's given uh, every three weeks, uh, eight different sessions, which is about five months. And then how it works is a, a monoclonal antibody that's going to be binding to the IGF-1 receptor, and that's going to block activation uh, and um, signaling pathways so that it ultimately will cause reduction of the inflammation behind the eye and uh, expansion of that, um, the eye tissues. So now I'm going to be turning it over to our uh, stars today. Um, one of whom you've seen on the on TV. This is Jeannie, um, Hi. and uh, this is Nayaz. And uh, Jeannie, I'm going to start with you. Um, can you tell me how long you've had thyroid eye disease and tell me about your story? Sure. So hi, everyone. Thank you for being here and continuing your education. It's really important. Um, my name is Jeannie, and um, you may have seen me on TV. I did do the commercial for Horizon, um, and I've had thyroid eye disease since 2019, about April of 2019. Um, I am an oncology nurse. That's what I do for my work. And I'm a patient, 
And I have a real story about this very debilitating disease. While I was diagnosed with Graves' disease and those hormones were taken care of and I was euthyroid, um, within six weeks, my eyes started really being affected by something other than allergies. It sort of looked like allergies, but it wasn't allergies. Um, so they were really dry and red. I had a lot of proptosis. Um, my eye, one eye got stuck kind of in the eye socket and it wouldn't move very easily. So that was a great party trick where I would look at one person, but another person as well. So weird to see. Um, so, you know, what did that do? That, had, that started a whole cascade of, of problems that, I, you know, I thought I had. You know, I ended up having to see five different doctors before I was diagnosed with thyroid eye disease. And I think that is um, the norm at the moment. And hopefully we can change that with some education and, um, and getting people to know that the eyes are really, really important if you have any thyroid dysfunction. It was very difficult for me to work on the computer. It was difficult for me to drive. It was, um, it was hard to walk sometimes if you had a really patterned floor and they're very popular right now in, in new homes with all these beautiful tiles and I, I just couldn't see very well. So, you know, it's probably a tripping hazard as well. Um, it's not only a physical feeling that you have, right, with, these, with this eye issue, because you can't drive, you know, night driving becomes a real problem, walking becomes a problem, reading becomes a problem. Um, it, it also changes and morphs, morphs your face. And, you know, it's, it's, it is all about the eyes, the eyes are what started, but thyroid eye disease actually starts morphing the buccal fat area in your face. It starts morphing the eyebrow areas. It can, not with everyone, but I certainly had that. I felt sort of Neanderthal at a certain point. Um, so you, that psychosocial aspect, that mental aspect is really strong. You don't want to go out. You don't want to have your picture taken. And you don't look at all like what you used to look like as evidenced by a colleague of mine looking at me saying, what happened to your face? I don't recognize you, which was really hard to hear. And I think you also had some of that too, where it's yeah. just so disfiguring. Right? Incredibly, it's yeah. very disfiguring. Um, and I uh, relate to yeah. so much of your experience. Um, my name is Nia Zolfagari, I'm 32 years old. I was diagnosed with Graves' disease about 14 years ago. And about two years after the fact, I was diagnosed with thyroid eye disease. My symptoms were pretty stable for a long time until about five years ago when my symptoms took a full 180, um, especially affecting my left eye versus my right eye. I had a lot of proptosis in that one eye. Um, of course, similar to your story, I had a really hard time driving. I had very bad tunnel vision, very bad double vision. Um, sleeping was really difficult. I'm a tummy sleeper. I love to sleep on my belly and I had to learn to sleep not only on my back, but I had to sleep upright Yeah, raised. for a good yeah. few years because I would wake up and the pressure and the pain would be, all be so debilitating that it would take a good two hours for me to be able to even feel a little bit of equilibrium for me to be able right. to get ready for the rest of the day. So it really impacted my mornings and my day. Um, dryness, redness that you yeah. also had as well too. Terrible. You would assume it's from allergies, but it was not from allergies. It was um, something that I had to use eye drops for constantly, yeah. all day. Um, eye serum at night, take the eyes shut, eye mask, sleep upright. I mean, it was atrocious. Um, and. Yeah, I mean, it's, if anything, it is very much a psychological, emotional, wearing disease, if anything, similar to what you mentioned, yeah. going out to birthday parties, graduations, lunches with friends, I would say no to almost every invitation because I knew that there would be a camera present. Yeah. I knew that a selfie was going to be taken. I knew that, you know, people were going to look at me and have conversation and kind of look a little like this. I had so many people also oh. say like, what's wrong with your eyes? That picture didn't come out good. Let's take another one. <laughs> Wearing glasses, sunglasses were like my safety zone, but even wearing sunglasses was really uncomfortable because of that one protrusion and significantly in one eye. Yeah. I could feel 
my eyelashes hitting the lens of the sunglasses, so I would have to kind of wear them a little bit below Lower. my nose. Yeah. Um, so it just day to day was really impacting the functioning of my days um, until finally Depeza showed itself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for sharing um, your stories. There's a lot of great uh, information for us as providers uh, about a thyroid eye disease that you've been able to provide for us and we really appreciate that telling us about your journey. I think that um, that does help us get patients to the thyroid eye disease providers faster when we understand this better. And oftentimes patients assume that their symptoms are just related to the thyroid disease itself. It's not related, it's not a separate issue with their eyes. Yeah. And so we need to have everyone really understand the, the risks that are involved with um, these uh, the eyes. And uh, it's extremely important that we're asking about the symptoms that they have been talking about. Because those questions are so important, as you can hear, they're really impacting their lives. So I really um, want to reach out to you to, to, to let you know, please um, ask these questions when you're in clinic um, and we can f find that disease activity earlier. It is, it is helpful. However, do remember that uh, Tepeza is um, used uh, in any part of the the story it doesn't matter about the duration or the amount of activity. Uh, so um, who do you refer to? Um, our thyroid eye disease uh, specialists include uh, ophthalmologists, oculoplastic surgeons, neuro-ophthalmologists, and uh, endocrinologists who've been trained in thyroid eye disease. So um, a team approach is really helpful, and in my practice, We've been using a team approach with oculoplastics and um, ophthalmology. So I, I work um, with the oculoplastics team, um, my two oculoplastic surgeons that I work with, um, and I communicate and we uh, delineate who's going to be doing what part of the, the plan so that in those, uh, in those five months, the patient knows who's doing what and everything goes much uh, more smoothly. Uh, we communicate all the time by text and that's really important. So how do you find somebody who's a, a TED specialist? Um, uh, one can uh, find it on the uh, Tepeza website um, or uh, request a rep from Horizon to come out. That, that is really pretty helpful. So um, now I'm gonna um, talk to you guys about uh, your treatment experience, um, if you could tell me about that, um, Nails. Yeah, absolutely. So I found out about Tepeza um, through a Google search, and then I found my TED specialist also through that Google search. So thank you to Google for bringing me here today. Um, so I, it's really jarring to look at those photos of myself, by the way. It's yeah. like, takes me back. Um, so I was finally a candidate for Tepeza in 2020. That's when I started doing my treatments. And like Dr. Gupta mentioned prior, it's eight infusions over the course of roughly five months. And I really made sure to understand that in order to really see and feel the benefits of Tepeza that I needed to stick the course yeah. and do all eight infusions. And as you can see from the images, I didn't, you don't really see a significant huge difference until about treatment four to five, that's when you really start to see it. So I knew like, okay, after treatment one, I feel a little bit less pressure. Right. After treatment two, okay, I can, I can kind of see a little bit more clearly, but physically I could see a huge difference between four and five. As far as the side effects that I did experience, um, I had very, very minor tendonitis in one of my ears. Um, I had some menstrual changes and that was really it for me personally. I didn't have too many, um, large significant side effects. Thank you. Um, I think it's great to see your positive results and um, know how everything went in your treatment. I want to remind everyone that everybody's uh, treatment is it's very uh, patient dependent. Everyone can have different results. But what we have found in clinical trials is that Tepeza um, has shown to reduce proptosis, the redness, um, pain and swelling of the eyes, and that's really important. 
But it can, um, even though it is generally well tolerated, as you said, there are some common adverse um, reactions that um, happen. And keep in mind, this was during COVID. Um, muscle aches, uh, dizziness, fatigue, um, some hair loss, uh, hyperglycemia, hearing loss, uh, t change in taste, headaches, menstrual changes, as you mentioned, uh, and um, dry skin are some of the, the adverse effects that people had seen. Tepesa can cause some infusion reactions, and in about 4% of patients treated with Tepesa did have those. Uh, it, it also is really important to note that it can exacerbate inflammatory bowel disease, and, and that's an autoimmune condition as well. So if you do have patients who do have inflammatory bowel disease, make sure you're asking them about those symptoms while they're on Tepesa. Uh, we note that it... Um, Changes in sugar, hyperglycemia can also take place after uh, Tepesa infusions. It's really important to monitor blood sugar before, during, and after treatment. So um, that, that is where um, the role of an endocrinologist is very helpful and uh, communication between uh, the uh, oculoplastics and ophthalmology team and the endocrinologist is really um, beneficial. So um, you can find the safety information um, on the website, um, tepezahcp.com. Uh, Janine, I'm gonna uh, want you to tell me a little bit about your experience. Yeah, my experience was a little, a little different. I wasn't diagnosed as long as Niaz was with uh, Graves' disease. It's much shorter time. Um, but when I was diagnosed with TED, I did do a lot of research on, you know, what can I do to help myself? And wow, it's just hard to see those eyes up there. Um, and, you know, really at that time, we had a couple options. They were high dose steroids, yay, or orbital decompression surgery, which sounds like a whole lot of fun too. And for the oculoplastic surgeons, that's great, but, um, that sounded like a tedious and very painful experience as well. So when Tepeza was approved, um, I, was, I was thrilled. Um, after talking to my TED specialist, we went through the risks and the benefits of everything. And I 100% thought that Tepeza would be the right option. And luckily, we were on the same page on that. And, um, you know, when Tepeza was approved, I got to get on to PESA and that worked out really, really well for me. Um, my, my experience with the infusion process was, it was super simple and um, I infuse people all the time too. And so I wasn't really afraid of that. It was a little, it's a little time consuming to be coming in for a couple hours, but that's all it is. It's not painful or anything. And um, I saw results, since this is so different for everybody, I saw results actually 48 hours after my first half dose. And when I say I saw results, I was astounded because most of the inflammation that I had been experiencing for a year, year and a half, it was gone, people, it was gone. I had no double vision after 48 hours. I, my eyes were not red, they were not tearing, and I actually started to look a lot more like myself. So much so that when I went to work, my colleagues were like, oh my God, you're back. It's you. It's not some crazy person that keeps coming to work <laughs> with one eye going here and one eye going there. Um, so I was just thrilled. Um, but that doesn't, it's not, that's not the case for everyone, but I, I had a really good outcome with just the first dose. But having said that, I kind of thought, well, maybe I shouldn't do eight doses since I had such a great reaction with this half dose, but I think it's very, very important to know that it is a, an eight dose course and to see optimal results, you do have to continue with the eight doses. So that was the decision I took along with my oculoplastic surgeon um, to continue with that. 
So it improved everything, the pressure, the pain, the redness, the double vision, the bulging eyes. I no longer had to tape my eyes shut at night. You both have had differing experiences in, in the duration of your disease process. You, Naez, you've had it longer, and uh, Jeannie, you've had this a shorter, and you still have had great outcomes from this. I think yeah. that's really nice. Um, so um, we, we have seen similar results in case studies, um, and we know that it's approved for treating TED, uh, regardless of the disease duration or disease activity. So our, our understanding of thyroid eye disease has been evolving uh, over time, and um, it's no longer um, a we're no longer thinking that the thyroid eye disease will flare and then subside. So um, this is very different from where we were even a couple years ago. We're actually seeing that um, thyroid eye disease can be treated um, with Tepeza and the symptoms get better at all the different stages of somebody's journey with the disease, despite the disease severity, uh, duration and symptom activity. So there's even further data from a phase four clinical trial of Tepeza in people who've, had, who've lived with thyroid eye disease in, for longer and have lower clinical activity. This reinforces that in a clinical setting, it uh, is effective to use Tepeza and regardless of the duration and activity of disease. Last week alone, I had identified four patients and sent them to oculoplastics for treatment, and we have, uh, we're, we're hoping to get the Tepezo started for them. Some of them have had it for uh, diagnosis more recently. Some have, were diagnosed almost 20 years ago. So in closing, uh, Naez and Jeannie, do you have any um, other thoughts today? Absolutely. I, um, I alluded to this a little bit earlier about how this disease is very emotionally, psychologically really drawing, dar, uh, jarring. I have been told everything from, you look fine. Oh, yeah. It's anxiety. Yeah. So if anything, I wanna just leave you with, please keep in mind that humility and empathy go a long way and that's what sticks with us the longer. That's what I remember the most through my experience is just how empathetic and kind and patient my endocrinologist, my oculoplastic surgeon were. And that's what I talk about the most beyond the treatment itself as I talk about that foremost. Yeah. And I, I definitely would echo that too, that it's really an emotional, it's a, it's a physically very disfiguring disease to have which causes a big emotional um, aspect. It's just really nicks away at your self-esteem. And to have, I think when, when healthcare professionals make comments like, well, it's not really the worst I've seen, it just undermines um, so much of that patient's feeling about themselves. Because that's not my goal. It wasn't my goal to be the worst that that doctor had ever seen. Certainly not. Um, and, I think that if, if we all just kind of look at the patient as a person, um, because they're all so different and, and they're gonna present very differently, um, I think it'll go a long way to, to helping the patients. So I appreciate everybody that's been here that's learning more about it and uh, appreciate Horizon very, very much for continuing with that, um, with the education and with the science. Thank you. Tepeza is a prescription medicine used to treat thyroid eye disease, or TED, no matter if you've had TED for months or years. Important safety information. What is the most important information I should know about Tepeza? Infusion reactions can happen during or within 24 hours after your infusion of Tepeza. If you have a reaction while receiving Tepeza, your doctor or nurse will slow or stop your infusion and treat your reaction. If you have a severe infusion reaction, your doctor may stop your treatment completely. Tell your doctor or nurse right away if you have any of these symptoms during or after your treatment with Tepeza. High blood pressure, difficulty breathing, fast heartbeat, headache, redness of the face feeling hot, muscle pain. If you have inflammatory bowel disease or IBD, such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, Tepeza may make your IBD symptoms worse. Symptoms of worsening IBD may include an increased number of loose stools with stomach pain or cramps and blood in your stools. 
After each Tepeza infusion, tell your doctor right away if you have worsening IBD symptoms. Tepeza may cause an increase in your blood sugar. Before starting treatment with Tepeza, tell your doctor if you are currently being treated for diabetes, know your blood sugar is high, or have been diagnosed with diabetes. It is important for you to take your treatments and follow an appropriate diet for glucose control as prescribed by your doctor. Tepeza may cause severe hearing problems including hearing loss, which in some cases may be permanent. Tell your doctor if you have any signs or symptoms of hearing problems or changes in hearing. Before receiving Tepeza, tell your doctor if you have inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, are currently being treated for diabetes, have been diagnosed with diabetes, or know your blood sugar is high, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant. Tepeza may harm your unborn baby. Tell your doctor if you become pregnant or suspect you are pregnant during treatment with Tepeza. Women who are able to become pregnant should use an effective form of birth control, contraception, prior to starting treatment, during treatment, and for at least six months after the final dose of Tepeza. Are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed? It is not known if Tepeza passes into your breast milk. Talk to your doctor about the best ways to feed your baby during treatment with Tepeza. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take, including prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, dietary, and herbal supplements. Know the medicines you take. Keep a list of them to show your doctor and pharmacist when you get a new medicine. What are the possible side effects of Tepeza? The most common side effects of Tepeza include muscle cramps or spasms, nausea, hair loss, diarrhea, feeling tired, high blood sugar, hearing problems, taste changes, headache, dry skin, weight loss, nail problems, and changes in menstruation. This is not a complete list of all possible side effects. Tell your doctor or treatment team about any side effect you may have. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov safety slash medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088. Please visit tepeza.com for more information.